Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, Monday. This is October the 17th, uh, and hopefully uh, our power up here finds you well today. Uh, have a, and, and uh, welcome to, uh, once again, welcome to Monday. Listen, it is uh, a little snowy outside this morning. Uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, maybe. Uh, we could say potentially let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Uh, my feeling is if it's going to be this cold, it might as well. If it's going to be cold enough to snow, it might as well snow. And so I know it's a little early for it, but man, it sure is beautiful. Uh, and just a a reminder of what's coming. I enjoy the winter season, enjoy the fall season. Well, all seasons are pretty good. Uh, and, and hopefully the snow uh, doesn't get you down today. Just be careful on the roads, all that good stuff there. Uh, we had a wonderful day in church yesterday. And uh, good to be with God's people, uh, and surely enjoyed that so very, very much. Uh, and <coughs> excuse me, uh, and look forward to our next scheduled time together, uh, and hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully you do as well. Now, we are in the book of Job uh, today, the book of Job, uh, and uh, if you remember, kind of maybe from uh, our last couple of times together looking at Job, you remember. Uh, Job was a man of character, uh, a man that feared God, uh, and had the really the right perspective on life. God had blessed him greatly. God had uh, protected him, uh, and so we find that uh, that there was a time when Satan, the devil, went to the throne room of God and made accusation against Job. He'd walked to and fro upon the earth, and and he says, "God, of course, Job's going to fear you, love you, follow you. Uh, you look at what you've done for him." And God, uh, uh, and God says, okay, okay, uh, you want to prove Job here today? Uh, we can do that. Uh, and Satan's, uh, God says, God allows Satan uh, to uh, afflict Job. This cannot hurt his body, cannot take his life. Uh, and so that's kind of where we left off. If you look at uh, Job chapter 1. Uh, and verse number 12, it says, right at the end of verse number 12, it says, So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And so Satan gets uh, really God's permission uh, to afflict Job. Uh, and that's kind of where we left it off the other day. Now, join me in verse number 13. We're going to look at uh, some of the affliction that comes to Job. Some of the heartache uh, that comes. We'll make a few comments that uh, may... Uh, apply to us a little bit today as well. So verse number 13, And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only have escaped alone to tell them. While he was yet speaking, uh, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen, fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants at the edge of the sword. I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. <clears throat> and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they uh, are dead, and I only uh, am escaped alone to tell thee. Now, you consider just kind of what we read, I mean, just the the gravity of the moment. Uh, Job just coining about his business as as he would any other day. I picture a, a messenger comes uh, uh, comes running to him and just saying, "Oh, you're not going to believe what happened. Not going to believe what happened. The ox and the uh, the asses they were uh, they were they were plowing and uh, and uh, and feeding and all of that. And the savings came and they and they took them and killed the servants. And while that <coughs> while that servant is is saying and, and giving this report, another one uh, begins says, yeah, and guess what, Job, you're not going to believe this happened as well. And 
uh, fire of God has fallen from heaven, hath burned up the sheep and the servants. And 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 as that guy finishes, uh, I tell you what happens is, yeah, and you're not going to believe this. Uh, what else happened? The Chaldeans came and took the camels and killed the servants. And, uh, and right as he's finishing up, another look says, and you're not going to believe this. Your sons, your daughters, they've all been killed. They were eating and drinking and maybe having a, a party, a get-together, and uh, the building fell on them. And we see this affliction of Job, and we find, and we might make more mention of this uh, tomorrow, but it says that then Job arose, in verse number 20, all that happens. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. I think over the next two days we'll kind of look at this a little bit more in depth, but I, I kind of wanted to share just kind of a main thought with you this morning. Well, let me give you, uh, yeah, let me just give you this main thought, and we'll talk about the other one tomorrow. You look at Job's response to uh, to what has happened. The, the servants coming and saying, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened. Let me kind of ask you a question. Have you ever had a bad day? Have you ever had a day where it just seemed like, man, there was no good news. There was nothing good happening. It seemed like, man, everything was, was going against you. We've all had days like that. But Job's response, we might look at that and say, Job, how in the world, how in the world can Job respond the way that he did? And <coughs> uh, and, and man, uh, verse number 22, in all this, Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. When I know in our lives, sometimes we uh, we get uh, some bad news, something bad happens. We're like, God, how can you uh, allow this to happen in my life? God, what in the world is going on? God, why would you do this to me? And that might be our response sometimes. But we see that that's not Job's response. Uh, and, and I want to kind of uh, draw your attention to just this thought, and we'll make a few more comments, as I said, tomorrow. Uh, but just this thought here in uh, uh, if you if you have your Bibles there uh, in Matthew chapter six, let me draw your attention to this thought that maybe uh, Job had maybe not just this thought, but what Job practiced in his life. Uh, and in Matthew chapter six, uh, in verse number nineteen, uh, let me just give you this reminder. It says, "Lay not up for yourselves." treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt where thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt where thieves do not break through nor steal for where your treasure is there will your heart be also and maybe job uh, had that uh, that thought and maybe that was really how he lived his life to where his treasures uh, were in heaven. Uh, now granted, he was blessed greatly on this earth and had so much as we read those things that had uh, been taken away from him. But I want to draw your attention back to Job chapter number one. Uh, and, and, and we look at in verse number two, we see his family. In verse number three, we see his possessions. But in verse number four, Number uh, five, I want you to note Job's focus. It wasn't on his possessions. It was on his family somewhat. But verse number five, and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone, gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early morning and offered burnt offering according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Where was Job's focus? It wasn't on his 7,000 sheep. We get that. It was all burned up. It wasn't on those 3,000 camels. They had all been carried, taken away. 
wasn't on those 500 oxen, those 500 asses, they had been taken away. Wasn't on, the, on his great household. And his focus wasn't, his number one focus wasn't his family either. And family is important, but it ought not be number one. Job's focus was on the Lord. It was on the Lord, and, and as he gets all this bad news and just the, the, the crushing news that he'd received and the heartbreak that, uh, that I'm sure that he felt, we find that he goes back to the Lord. And we'll make more mention of this tomorrow, but uh, he gets all that news, and what does he do? He arose, in verse number 20, rent his mantle, which, which he tore his mantle because he was heartbroken. He shaved his head, fell down on the pile on the ground. What did he do? He worshiped God. Even in the midst of that heartache, uh, that sorrow, he goes to the Lord and worships. Christian today, Listen, in life, you will experience heartache. You will experience difficulty. Can I encourage you to keep on worshiping? The things of this life are going to come, they're going to go. Relationships are going to come, they're going to go. Family that doesn't last forever. Invest in them, okay? But don't ever, don't ever stop worshiping God. Job, the first thing he does is worships. He had a right perspective on life. And we might look at this, we might say, man, Job is, uh, he's heartless. No, he ran his mantle means his heart was broken. He was mourning, shaved his head. He was saddened and shaved his head uh, and then worshiped God. Listen, let's be faithful in worshiping our Lord. Let's maintain that right relationship with him. The things of this world, as we read in Matthew chapter 6, they don't last. Your relationship with the Lord lasts. And that's what we need to be investing in, is that relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, I'm going to leave you with those thoughts for the day. Uh, lay, up for your tre <coughs> lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Uh, and be sure and maintain that proper perspective on life. Let me give a, a shout out to those who are watching on Facebook. Once again, let me encourage you like and share uh, so that others can uh, watch and uh, maybe this will be a blessing to somebody today. Uh, and so be sure and share that so that others may be a part of it. Now, let me greet those who are watching uh, Calvary Baptist Church. Once again, uh, uh, Ingrid uh, got uh, kind of, uh, I don't know what happened, pushed the wrong button maybe, but good morning, Ingrid. Love you. Have a great day. Uh, and, and all of that. Uh, Brian and Cindy, good morning to you. Have an awesome day. Enjoy that snow. Saw your video this morning. Uh, David, good morning to you. Uh, have a great day. Cliff and Karen, good morning to you as well. Have a wonderful day. Jody, good morning. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, Lee and Angie, good morning to you. Love the snowflake there. Uh, I don't know if it's still snowing. Uh, I'll take a look in a couple minutes here when we are done, but uh, uh, man, uh, the snow is beautiful today. Uh, a few more. Shirley, good morning to you as well. Thank you for uh, for being on. Gene, good morning. Uh, have a great day. Uh, I don't know, is it is it snowing downstate there, Gene? Uh, and uh, we've got it here. I don't know if it's snowing down there. Charlie and Marsha, good morning to you. Have an awesome day. Lynette, that sounds a little chilly there for Arkansas. 28 tonight. <clears throat> a little chilly, uh, but uh, have a great day. Enjoy the coolness, I guess, when you when you can get it. Uh, Bill, good morning to you as well. Thank you for watching. And Paula, good morning to you. Have an awesome uh, day. All right. Uh, Lord bless everybody. Uh, bless you all. Be praying for one another. Uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll pick up in Job, Job uh, tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. Be careful out there at all the uh, slushiness of the snow. Have a wonderful day.